Uh, this video will demonstrate how I uh, tackle a posterior polar cataract. In this case, the cataract does not seem to be very large, but unfortunately it is right in the patient's visual axis and causes considerable difficulty to the patient, especially in bright sunlight. Now these cataracts might seem innocuous, but they are one of the most dangerous type of cataracts to tackle for the reason of which there is usually around that plaque on the posterior capsule either a dehiscence of the posterior capsule or a congenital absence of the posterior capsule or perhaps even a weakness in the posterior capsule around the posterior polar cataract. So taking these things into account one has to modify one's technique such that a posterior capsule blowout, whilst always a possibility, has to be guarded against. Now here we do the capsular axis much as we do a normal capsular axis. There is no change to technique or there is no need to change uh, for any safety reasons. It is better that the capsular axis is a little larger than smaller because here we don't want any hydrostatic pressure building up in, in the bag of the capsule whilst hydrodissecting. Um, hydrodissecting actually is the wrong word. We do not hydrodissect here, we hydrodelineate in that we go into the nucleus and inject so that we separate the nucleus from the epinucleus. Uh, we do not inject, uh, we do not hydrodissect, that is we do not separate the capsule from the epinucleus or the epinucleus from the capsule because as we, if we do that, we ch run a high risk of the posterior capsule blowing out due to the inherent weakness of the capsule in or around uh, the posterior polar cataract. Now here we go into the nucleus, we withdraw a little bit and only then inject. As you can see, the nucleus is well hydrodelineated, a bit of the pole has popped up obligingly into the anterior chamber and uh, we uh, now aspirate, or largely aspirate rather than phaco the lens uh, into the phaco port. Now as you can see on the upper left hand side there is some opacity in the epinucleus which is a good sign actually because it shows that the opacity hasn't reached all the way to the posterior capsule. Uh, whilst aspirating, the, here we actually visco-express the subincisional cortex out of the subincisional area and then bring it into the center of the um, into the center of the field for aspiration by the phaco handpiece. Do not attempt to aspirate all the epinucleus with the phaco handpiece, rather go in with your irrigation and aspiration and do your INA as you normally would, with the exception that you leave the, um, the area around the posterior polar uh, cataract for the last, because we still assume that there is weakness in that area and you clear all the peripheral cortex before you clear that cortex, take, assuming that that is an area where uh, posterior capsule rupture could occur. Uh, even though in this case it looks quite obvious that the, the opacity has not extended to the capsule but is only within the epinucleus. Still, one takes as much care as possible to aspirate that area absolutely last. Now we fill in the bag with the viscoelastic using the Banaji eye lock we give counter pressure as the lens enters the anterior chamber and goes into the bag. Another point to remember here is that when we uh, do the aspiration of the viscoelastic. Uh, you, it would be advisable to use low flow rates because we don't want the bag to be under any positive hydrostatic pressure more than necessary 
because we still assume that that area around the posterior polar cataract is a weak area. Fortunately, this cataract has gone off without event and we are now at the end of the surgery uh, hydrating the wounds and the cataract um, luckily has not bitten us back and the case is uh, got over uneventfully.